Hello love bugs, Send out here coming to you with another video and in this video we are going to talk about the scalp but not just anything as it pertains to the scalp, scalp exfoliation. Alright, so let's get into it. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to this video sponsors, Dossier. Oh, how I love Dossier. They make herbal dupes of your favorite scents. And you guys know as an herbalist, I'm so into having herbal scents, you know, all over my body. And so Dossier makes that so very possible. If you're interested in looking through their scents and getting your hands on even this one, make sure you check the link left in the description box below. Tell them Stan sent you, okay? One of the main arguments that everybody has right now is do we actually need to shampoo our hair? I need you to think of your scalp as your hair's soil. We love to compare ourselves to plants, so let's do that. Let's compare ourselves to plants. It is so important that the soil stays clear. Just like if you were planting a garden, you would make sure you went and picked out weeds or anything that could possibly act as a threat on your plant's roots. So it's the same concept whenever we are talking about shampooing and exfoliating. So it would probably be a little easier for you to understand how important it is for you to have proper gardening of your scalp if you can understand what's actually going on in there so in a previous video I already let you guys know about the sebum and the acid and the sweat that comes out of the scalp check this video right here but in this video we're gonna talk about something else that comes from the scalp and this is actually yeast and this yeast contributes to so much scalp inflammation which causes different different scalp inflammation disorders like seborrheic dermatitis, eczema, scalp pariasis, just to name a few. No matter the color of your skin or how much melanin you got in you, okay, everybody has this yeast in their skin. Now, this yeast is the ultimate colonizer, okay? You want to talk about colonization. This yeast feeds off of sebum. It is the thing that this yeast loves the most. It's its favorite treat of the week, all right? So the natural sebum that's on your scalp, the more of it it has to feed on, the more relaxed this form of yeast becomes and the more relaxed this form of yeast becomes the more inflammation lies within the scalp there's it's in, it is imperative that you shampoo your scalp on a regular basis because that is the only way to be able to remove this form of yeast. This form of yeast is not killed by any type of co-washing conditioners or anything of that nature. Nothing that you guys are putting on the hair is going to kill this form of yeast except for apple cider vinegar. But see, we have pros and cons. Yes, apple cider vinegar will for sure kill that yeast, baby. It'll unclog your sink. But what it will also do, on top of killing that yeast, it will never stop with the weathering process of the hair shaft. Shampooing the scalp is one of the main ways, if not the most useful way, at combating any type of scalp inflammation like dandruff, right? Most people see dandruff in the scalp and if you see flakes in your scalp, especially dandruff, oh my gosh, so much on YouTube, people treat dandruff or things like suburban dermatitis with oils and that could not be more crazy think about it dandruff is something that most people think is a form of dry scalp but in reality it's the actual opposite what is actually happening within the follicle when somebody has a dandruff there is actually an overproduction of oil within the follicle and dandruff the flakes on the scalp that you are seeing visually is the body's response at fighting off at that overabundance of oil within the hair's follicle right and so if there's two much oil in the follicle there's also too much acid in the follicle and if there's too much acid in the follicle there's also too much yeast so this sebum and this yeast and this acid form this creates 
all of the different scalp disorders that we've talked about and all of the different scalp inflammations that we know about and try to treat with at home cures that we learn here on YouTube. But like I said, the reality of it is treating scalp inflammation with oil is the worst thing one could possibly do. Sebum is just the yeast favorite snack, right? That's his favorite snack. That's what the yeast likes to eat in his spare time. You know, it's his favorite food. But the yeast favorite environment is wet or humid spaces. So wet or humid spaces, if you're a person who walks around with wet hair, if you're a person who loves to do wash and goes and you have a water bottle in your bag, and anytime your curls get a little dry or your hair gets a little dry, you putting out a spray bottle and spraying your hair you are creating a magical magnificent environment for that ease have you ever had braids in your hair for a long time or just have braids in your hair and then you take you go to take it out or you go to take it out and then you go to scrape and there's like a thick white that's yeast yeah that thick white stuff that you're seeing that's yeast and sebum and all of those things mixed together it is something that is very very important and if you are not shampooing your hair on a regular basis you create a perfect environment for yeast to grow for yeast and bacteria to grow so if you're a person who doesn't shampoo their hair on a regular basis or you just prowl on product after product after product and you only call wash your hair you are making the most magical and most perfect environment for yeast to grow within the hair's follicle make sure that when you're shampooing the hair you focus the shampoo on the roots all right we are overusing product and wasting money by taking a whole bottle and then putting it everywhere no you are shampooing your hair the shampoo is for the roots right so you're focusing on the roots to get off all of the stuff that we just talked about just now we're getting off all that stuff and as you shampoo your hair you'll notice without you doing anything the shampoo will go ahead and begin to flow down the hair shaft when you shampoo the hair the hair is letting off a negative charge which like i said i'll go deep into another day it's letting off a negative charge right and so for you to balance off the natural ph balance of the hair you then get a conditioner and that conditioner gives a positive charge to the hair shaft and this is what levels off everything and what normalizes the natural pH balance some people are like oh use apple cider vinegar yeah it may do that but guess what else it'll do you are gonna be walking around smelling like pickle juice and not all are gonna be smelling like pickle juice but it's not going to stop the deterioration process because there's nothing to cap the thing that it does to weather the hair shaft right I really always recommend a shampoo and conditioner from the same brand why because the shampoo puts a negative charge in the hair and the conditioner puts the positive charge in the hair so the chemist makes a product formulation perfect with a positive uh, a negative charge in the shampoo and a positive charge in the conditioner with a perfect formulation that's the science behind having a shampoo and conditioner that mix right and shampoo is for the shampoo is for the scalp and conditioner is for the hair shaft right because the the scalp just need to be cleansed of everything that we talked about today but the sebum is gonna come out fast that's why you gotta wash your hair on a regular basis because the natural oil that's gonna lubricate your hair shaft and lubricate your scalp is coming out you don't need to add any oil right and when you put the conditioner on you can put the conditioner on down here you don't need to go all the way up to the root and rub conditioner in unless the conditioner unless you have some type of disorder with your scalp and you have a conditioner that has been prescribed to you by a dermatologist conditioner does not go on the scalp the only time a conditioner goes on the scalp is when it's prescribed to you by a medical professional and it's been formulated with um, ingredient basis a small with small enough particles to not block the follicle for example uh olaplex the way that olaplex's technology is the molecules are small enough to the point where they won't block the follicle is not to treat the follicle so don't go rubbing your olaplex on the scalp because it's not for that but it's a molecule so it's not blocking the follicle i really hope that that makes sense
So remember, the rate in which you shampoo your hair is going to be dependent on your lifestyle, um, the texture of your hair, and your sebum level, meaning how oily your hair gets, how much you sweat in your hair, and how much, I mean, how well you taking care of it and what you doing to it. Like, do you be rolling around in the mud? What you be doing? That's, mm-hmm. As it pertains after you shampoo your hair, if you are a person who goes longer than two weeks without shampooing their hair, you need to use a exfoliator every single time you shampoo your hair. If you are somebody who has seborrheic dermatitis, dandruff, or psoriasis, a severe form of this, it's not really recommended that you use a scalp scrub. And that reason is because if you have severe if you have a severe case of any of these, peeling it and itching it will actually make it worse. That's why it's so crazy to me, like all of these videos, like, oh, picking dandruff and picking scabs and peeling it is actually the worst thing that you should do because whenever there is, for like I said, when it comes to dandruff, dandruff is an infection of the hair's follicle. It's an overproduction of oil within the follicle. And the body's response to that is crazy creating flaky like patches that look like dandruff to protect the body as it's fighting off this infection within the follicle so the last thing you want to do is add an additional barrier with more oil oil is not healing oil just like color doesn't lift color that's not how it goes all right I really really hope that this makes sense and if you want more we're definitely going to have a part two of this video make sure that if you feel like I went over certain things too fast i know i do talk fast sometimes so make sure you check the blog post oh my god it's packed full of so much information and resources almost every question you could possibly ask me i promise you i've already answered it on this blog post with even more resources to get you the answers that you need all right so make sure you get you Make sure you get you some dossier. It's, it's not in the box no more because I already opened it in the video. You already saw it. But make sure you get you some dossier so you'll be smelling good after you wash your hair. And exfoliate if you go too long. Let's stop being dusty. Wash your hair.